is required to a person who has azanat, he has high ambition, then it is not only a requirement, for him it's compulsory, because his spirit is not satisfied now. If you have high intelligence, and the teacher keeps moving you backwards, or keeps saying, no, 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 stay with the same class, don't go forward, what's going to happen to you intellectually? You get very stressed out, right? You can start acting out this way or that way. So for those ones, now, this because Allah has given the invitation for everyone to come close to Him. It's not only to select few. Everyone. That's why He sent prophets. Prophets saying, ever saying, this is for you and this is not for you? No. Ever awliya Allah, when they come and they give waz or they give sohbet, they say, no, this is not for you, you. Move away from here. This is only for special people. No. They give to everyone. But they are seeing amongst the ones that they have given, there are some who have higher aspirations. Then they say, maybe you should sit a little bit over here. Those who don't want, who cannot carry it, maybe you should stay over there. But it doesn't mean now these ones, they are not going to follow. You see, people are not understanding. They are thinking that Tarikat is an, uh, a nice addition, you know. If you have Islam praying five times and you believe, you have Iman, then Ihsan is only optional. But that hadith of Jibreel, salam, Prophet, salam, giving us these three, they are together. Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And Ihsan, Hassan, <laughs> to make it beautiful. To worship Allah as if you see Him. And if you don't see Him, to know that Allah is seeing you. This is what Tariqat <coughs> is bringing to you. So now decide whether it is optional or not. Whether it is necessary or not. Whether it is, uh, what is it, superfluous or not. You see, to a man who has high spirituality, he wants to learn. And this is... And I think that Tariqat is bringing that is not ilm, it is complete ilm, it's bringing. But not just ilm, ilm. You understand? Ilm. With your hands and your feet, you understand? Not just, hmm, yes, I get it. Taking down notes, uh, no. Put it to your heart. Once it starts pumping to your heart, to the rest of your body, now you cannot keep still now. You start making things, building things. How do you think great empires of this world, bringing Islam to everywhere, they're able to be built by people who are just sitting and hmm, learning? No, after they learn, they go. Holy Prophet, they said to us, salam. He may give different secrets. Are there secrets in Islam? Yes, there are. It's called imulatin, isn't it? Hidden knowledge. But it is hidden from common people, but the people who have higher knowledge is not hidden to them. I will say, for example, if you are a surgeon, brain surgeon, that knowledge, it is hidden knowledge because it's hidden from me. But it is not now inaccessible if I study and if I'm trained under one, maybe I'm going to get it one day. Maybe. I'm past a certain age also. There are certain things that can only be given to you at a certain time. So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, there is a knower above every knower. That is ayatul karima. There is a knower above every knower. Whatever I know, I cannot claim to know everything. Man is foolish. If I claim that, don't follow that one. <laughs> if someone is saying, if I'm saying, I know all four masab imams, Subhanallah, how I'm going to know for myself, Imams. They came a thousand years ago, maybe, and I know every fatwa that came from that time until now. Oh. If a man is claiming that, if you like to follow him, follow him too. It's no problem with me. But put a question mark there. And so, now, what we're trying to say with all of this is that people who have aspirations now meaning 
they are looking at themselves and they are asking themselves a very fundamental question. Who am I? And who is my Lord? Right? What in the West they call existentialism. Who am I? What is my place here? What is my purpose here? Why am I born? Where am I going to? All these questions, even kafirs, they ask. Now, for the Muslim who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believer must ask. The believer cannot say, oh, that's it, I say shahadat, I pray five times a day, I'm assured to go to paradise. Nothing is assured to us. Allah is the turner of hearts. If Allah wants, He can turn your heart. So, uh, now, the one who is asking himself, who am I and who is my Lord? And he's questioning himself. That is the one that we say they have high aspiration. That's the one that they say, now, according to the book knowledge, is not going to give you an answer too much. Now you have to follow someone who is the author of the book. There's Quran. Ever you hear any Sahabi Kiram, they say, no, 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 no need to follow a prophet so much. We follow Quran. Ever you hear anyone saying that? Any prophet? Any Sahabi saying that? No, they follow the author of the Quran. The walking Quran. And there are Warisul Anbiya. Warisul Anbiya. The inheritors of the prophets who are walking Qurans also. We were just about to say Hujat al-Islam, Imam al-Ghazali. Can anyone claim to be higher than Hujat al-Islam? Can anyone? Any scholar now? Can anyone claim to be? No. No one can claim to be higher than him. He went through a crisis of faith, didn't he? This is well known. He studied so much, he's able to give fatwas continuously from morning to evening. He knows Quran, he knows Hadith, he knows everything back and forth. But he went through a crisis of faith. Now faith, now we come to understand faith. Now it's more than doing. It's more than knowing. It is what goes on in here. What you really believe. Now how do you get belief? You cannot get belief from a book. You get belief from believers. They have belief to give and to show you. How are you going to get peace? Not from a book. You will only get peace and know how to receive and to give that peace through people of peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the way. Be with the Salihin. This ayat. Be with the Salihin. When you're with the Salihin, then you will learn the way of the Salihin. The Salihin, who is in front of them? Allah? No. They say Prophet alayhi So now, People who have gone through this, and I believe everyone goes through this. Isn't that what they call midlife crisis too? You start buying nice motorbikes and cars and clothes and start to look young. Huh? Because you start to question yourself, the idea, the reality of death is hitting you. So many things you say, what is this for? I achieve all this, what is this for? You start asking questions. Now, one that is in tariqat must ask his questions, not when he's 40 or 50 or 60. Must ask that earlier. Must ask that every day. That's why in our way, we say tafakur. It is important. In our way, tafakur. To sit down and to judge and to ask ourselves, what did I do for the sake of Allah today? What am I doing today? That is only for Allah's sake. Did I live according to Islam? Did I live according to my religion? Did I function today for the sake of Allah? Or am I just going through my life like a robot doing this and that? You question yourself. What is this for? Why am I doing this? Why am I saying this? So, now everyone goes through that midlife crisis. Everyone goes through that crisis of faith that Hujat al-Islam, Imam al-Ghazali, he went through, he did not find that peace until he starts sitting with the shaykhs and with the murids.
from Ahli Tarikat. Did he sit with them to learn book knowledge, you think? Zahir knowledge? Do you think? He is Hujatul Islam. Are we understanding the title Hujat, the proof of Islam? You think he went there? There's nothing that he doesn't know, really, in terms of Sharia. So now he sits with people who are people of Hal, experience. They experience their faith. Because Holy Prophet Lesetuan says, the best knowledge is the knowledge that you experience. And now the Shaykhs and the Dervishes, they experience their faith. They experience it. What do we mean by experiencing the faith? Now when they say we believe in Allah, they experience Allah. We believe in the Prophet ﷺ. Yes, they experience that. They experience the angels, they experience in books, they experience. Now he says, I sit with the people of Hal and with Makam. They don't talk about it, they experience it. And with that, only with that was he able to find his faith back. Then he came and he wrote what? Ihya Muluddin. Combining it and showing people now. So from that time until now, there's always been a divide between the people of Tariqat and the people of Shariat. But people of Tariqat never say we don't follow Shariat. We follow Shariat, we take the shell and we take the inside too. There is one wing of Shariat, but we take the other wing of Tariqat also. Then that way you can fly. You don't only take one. You cannot even just take the other one too without the Shariat, of course. And now, if you are going to experience your faith, just like the Sahabis, they want to experience the faith, who did they find? The Holy Prophet ﷺ. And once they found the Prophet, you think they say, okay, thank you very much, I found my faith, and they move away? No, they stick with him until he says, now go on my behalf. Now represent me, I give you my light. That Ibn Abbas, radiallahu an, his uncle, went to Central Asia and is able to make the whole area there to become Muslims. But that is what? When he looks at the Prophet ﷺ and he says, May my parents be sacrificed for you. May everything be finished for you. There is nothing but you. And they fall in love with the Prophet ﷺ and they fall into that ocean. They finish themselves into that ocean of love of the Prophet ﷺ. They say, only you. We love you more than anything else. Oh, isn't this what Holy Prophet is saying ﷺ? If you don't love me more than anything else, your faith is not complete. So this is the way. Tariqah is the way of the Prophet. We're trying to make our faith complete. We're not forcing anyone to come. We're not forcing anyone to stay. If you know that you want something more, welcome. If you think this is it, that this is what you have and it's okay for you, we say welcome to you too. There are so many people who stop at high school and they're happy with it. It's okay. There are so many people who stop at college level. We say that's okay too. But we're going to teach you something that's higher than that. Without losing your foundation, without losing your base. You come back now full circle, back to the beginning. And the beginning of Islam is, you believe in Allah, you believe in the Prophet ﷺ. After Prophet passed, Abu Bakr Siddiq, you believe in the Abu Bakr Siddiq ﷺ. He's representing him. After him, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali, continuing both in the way of the physical world and also in the way of the spiritual world, continuing with other tariqats. You believe, meaning that one is representing that one who represents the Prophet. So now you have a guide, and that guide is the one who is connected, who has a lineage to the Prophet. And only people who have a lineage. Not just by blood, but also by life. So many people by blood they have, but you find them in clubs, you find them in, you find them in there. Isn't that rea reality? But there are those ones who are real seeds, and they really go out of their way, their lives, they're sacrificing for the people. So, if you like, join us. If you don't, it's okay. 
But understand, you always have a role model that is in front of you. There's a role model. If you don't take it from the Prophet ﷺ, that one who's representing the Prophet, then someone else you're taking it from. Make sure that you know who you're taking. Be very clear. Because we are all clean and someone else is writing things on us. Make sure the one who's writing that is not only the Prophet ﷺ, but those ones who are his rightful inheritors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Obey Allah, obey the Prophet, and obey your rightly guided leaders. From a person of, mis of real understanding, once from afar, if they're walking and they're looking for a masjid, from afar, if they see a minaret, they know it is a masjid. Isn't it? For people of understanding, for people who are completely blind or stubborn, you bring them to the door of the masjid, they say, Prove to me this is a masjid. So we're not here in the game of proving to each other. We're here for those who are understanding, they're going to see and they're going to take. That's all. We leave uh, to come to the way of tariqat. Like I said, tariqat is teaching us to question these fundamental questions and to give answers to it and to say, who am I and who is my Lord? And there are people there that have asked you that, that question to themselves. They have walked that way and they have walked the way of their shaykhs and their shaykhs are holding them too. And they say, welcome to you. As you like again. No need to argue. There's too much argument now these days. Shariat or tariqah. It's okay. From that time until now, you think we're going to end it? It's not going to end. It's not going to end until Hazrat Mahdi is going to come to finish all. <laughs> but... For people of understanding, there is no argument. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Very well. Alright. Any questions? Say. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. There is a hadith saying that the Holy Quran will act as an intercession on the judgment day for those who read it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to live by what the Holy Quran says and apply it to our daily lives. But does this tariqah emphasize reading from the Quran on a daily basis or often? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> People are usually looking at us and thinking that <coughs> because we are emphasizing don't read the Quran, don't just rely on the Quran. They're saying, oh, these people, they're telling people not to read the Quran. That's not what we mean. We're showing you a little bit of the minaret, and you are saying, what? What is that? You're not understanding what is that. In the Naqshbandi way, we read the Quran five times a day. Not once, five times. If we pray Fajr, which I'm inviting everyone, if you can, if you're not too busy to pray Fajr with us and to understand what the Naqshbandi Fajr is, and this is a little bit abbreviated also. You have to recite every day Suratul Yasin. If you mute it, we recite. Or you sit someone who can recite. For Zuhur prayer, we have to sit, we have to read Suratul Mulk. For Asar, Suratul Naba. For Maghrib, Suratul Sajda. For Ishak, we have to read Suratul Mulk again. There are different reasons for that. Fridays, we have to read at least Suratul Kaf, Fatih, and uh, Suratul what? Jumma. Suratul Juma. We have to read. And this is just basic. Other than that, as part of our awrat, part of our wirid, we are reading one juice of the Quran every day. Now, this is for murids who can carry it. Because, you know, if you're a good teacher, you're not going to give your students something that they cannot carry. Good teacher, good doctors, if you're a bus driver, you're not going to tell everyone, now learn how to be to drive the bus. They may do it for you. If you can do it, you do it. If you cannot do it, there are ways of substituting it also. Part of a daily zikr, if you cannot read one Jews of the Quran, then read one his of the Dalil Sharif. If you cannot do that, recite 100 times Ikhlas Sharif. We are listening to the sohbets of our share and 
You see, like I said, a lot of people, I don't know what's happening sometimes. Uh, it's, they are so used to certain ways, and they say if this certain way is not presented to us, it cannot be authentic. It's very easy for us to sit here and to be reciting Quran, it's perfect Arabic, and to recite, you know, that this is coming from this surah, this verse, and everything, the way that the scholars they are doing, but like I said, we are not a scholastic association. We will say things that it will fit into everyone's intelligence at whatever level. And more than recitation of the Quran, we're going to talk about the meaning from the experience of the ayats that we are talking about. So that it makes sense, it's not just a recitation of the Quran. So, that is what we are doing. If Muritsi cannot carry it, then there are certain things that they can carry. They can recite Ikhlas Shalim or other things. If you cannot do all of that, the Shah will say, okay, then do something else. Do this or do that. Because now they don't place such a heavy burden on us that we cannot carry also. Uh, they are representing the Holy Prophet as Rahmatilil Alameen, the uh, mercy to all the nations. And they know the murids of today is not the same as murids 100 years ago. Completely different. Completely different. Or 50 years ago, or 200 years ago, you cannot expect. That's the problem with books, because it's trapped there. It's just a stale knowledge. You cannot. Now, there are living books, and there are people who can give you knowledge that is fresh. The knowledge has to come fresh and alive, and to give whoever that is there for them. But who is really listening these days? People are very used to 10 years, 20 years of their lives, going to school, listening to lecture. Now they finish, they also want to hear lecture, until they, <laughs> they want to hear lecture, 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 lecture. No, move away from the lectures. Now have softbacks. Now understand what is happening, put two and two together and put it into your life. It is not how much knowledge you have, it is how much you put it into your life. Like they're saying in Turkish, <clears throat> a donkey that circles seven times around the Kaaba does not become a haji. Yeah? Don't be like the donkey, Holy Prophet is saying, burdening yourself with books. Now start to do it, start to become human. And especially in the Nakshibandi Tarikat, we're saying, oh, you think you know, we're going to take away that too. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. Whatever ilah that you have in there, get rid of it. Put Allah. <laughs> Fatiha. Um, say When I get angry I can be so loud and speak so much But when I'm doing zikr I struggle to get my voice to be loud And sometimes struggle to keep up with the leader Is there anything I can do to fix this problem? Yeah, don't get angry Number one In a zikr time Step on your ego That is all the ego uh, yeah, a lot of people, they are like that. When it comes to their own nafs, they get very excited, they get very loud. But when it comes to saying Allah, everyone is very subtle and subdued. Why is that? It's loud zikr is loud. We're not even making hadra here. If we make hadra that time, oh, we have to jump up and down now. Yeah. Silent zikr, we're doing that too. That's the time when you shut everything down. You shut this down, you shut everything. Now you're just remembering Allah. You can try to be around the Jamaat a little bit more. If you can try to be around me physically, I'm going to wash you up that time. Then you're going to fix this problem. I'm not going to say read this ayat, read this dua, everything. There are certain things you have to be there. And you're going to say, why are you doing this? <laughs> going to have to knock you wall to wall. You're going to fix you, then it's okay. Not with too much talking to you. You're going to say, what's the matter with you? You cannot even say Allah. Oh, Easy that time, inshallah. It is. That's how it is. Assalamu alaikum. Say. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.